this frame uh, reminds us of the, the places that were significant for us as Catalina Cruz. We often came back to um, Lake Boga for the uh, maintenance of, of a particular part of the plane or getting new planes. So uh, Lake Boga was always in our thinking as far as uh, good supply was concerned. So we have the, uh, the map here which tells us there's Lake Boga right down there in Victoria, uh, part of the Murray River complex. And it was here that the planes from America would come. And uh, the American crews were always eager to have armour plating between them and the enemy that was firing. And we would have all of that heavy armour plating taken out. If, we, if the wheels were on, uh, amphibians, we would take them off. There was a particular skin that was put into the, uh, the, um, the petrol tanks. That was taken out, the self-sealing tanks. So that Lake Boga was very important because all the new planes would always come here. And if we had other things that we needed specialist treatment, we would come down to Lake Boga. Some Catalinas were uh, uh, amphibian, meaning they could land on an airstrip or land on water. Now, to land on an airstrip, they've got to have, be able to put wheels down, of course. And this is the mechanism that come, comes out and they, they, from the side of the fuselage down here. This is the big uh, shock absorber, the <coughs> main uh, uh, wheel stud, strut, and the big main wheels would be up about that high. And they'd let the let the wheels down and then you had a nose wheel and the Catalina could land on an airstrip. And when it took off, they were just, it all folded up and was tucked away on the side of the aircraft. But the ones that weren't amphibian, to get them out of the water, you had to fit uh, beaching gear wheels to the side and then they put a tractor onto them and pulled them up the ramp. When the lake went dry, this was found in the bottom of the lake. Catalinas uh, at the outbreak of World War II were just about obsolete. And then when the Japanese uh, had a big hit on Pearl Harbor and brought the Americans into the war, big time, the Catalina came back into its own. Air sea rescue, reconnaissance, and they were then hanging torpedoes under the wing, mines, bombs, and the old cat was responsible for sending a lot of uh, Japanese ships to the bottom. They were an American aircraft, of course. The Australians flew them, the RAAF, the Royal New Zealand Air Force flew them and the Dutch flew them. And this particular aircraft, the fuselage, is out of a Dutch aircraft because all the, all the writing and printing inside is all in Dutch. One of the members of the uh, Lake Boga Lions Club worked for the Swan Hill Shire and he was the dog ranger. And he was out north of Swan Hill checking uh, the farms and uh, to see that the dogs that they had were all registered and he came across this cat leader laying at the back of a shed. And uh, he came back to the Lions Club and said what he'd found. And the uh, kind-hearted gentleman on the farm donated the Catalina to us, but we had to go and get it. And uh, I carted it here on my truck and trailer. With great big working bees we had. And uh, we were about 10 years restoring this aircraft back to where it is now. I did, uh, must have, I did about 80% of the restoration on my own. We had another gentleman in the club who's not with us anymore, he's deceased, uh, Eddie Scown. Uh, Ed was, had a, a forklift mounted on his little tractor and uh, he did all the lifting for us and he also had a semi-trailer that anything too, too long, he, we carted it on Eddie's semi and uh, he, he played a big part. This, this Catalina is exactly the same Catalina that was outside and when, uh, when they built this, uh, uh, this shed over it, they poured the concrete floor without moving the aircraft and built the shed without, uh, without doing anything to it. We, we got it painted and there's all new perspex in the, in the windows and it's here now for uh, forevermore. Uh, we just put it back together. Uh, we, I've got a, a Catalina workshop manual at home and we went by that. And uh, just the way that's, yes, and I knew what a Catalina looked like and. Oh yes, I loved it. And the people that, that would come up to you while you were working you out in the uh, out in the open, they'd come up to you and say, "Oh yeah, I used to, I was an air gunner and all that sort of thing." You'd have to put down your tools and listen to them, 
the, the stories that they told are very, very interesting and very interesting times. I, I was born in 1932, so uh, uh, I was uh, around 10, 11 and 12 when World War II was on. When you get aeroplanes, flying boats landing on the lake, uh, it's, uh, and uh, for little boys, it was a great attraction to see these aeroplanes come in and take off again. And then I had the privilege for my 12th birthday to have a uh, flight and a Catalina, which didn't turn out to be a very good birthday present because they didn't have sick bags in the aircraft. I'll leave the rest to your imagination. <laughs> After we've uh, finished with this planet, the children that are coming along, most of them, if you said what a Catalina, what a flying boat, they seem to think you have a, you have a ship with wings on it. Uh, but they don't know. But uh, when you see the film and the, this, and after this uh, interview you got with me, they'll understand that it was an aircraft and, uh, and the, the greatest significance that it played during World War II. Well, in conclusion, I'd like to uh, thank the federal government, uh, state government and the Swan Hill City Council for the work that they put into it and because uh, this aeroplane just didn't happen. And I want to personally thank all those involved and also all those that came and give us a, gave a hand, donated their time, their machinery, and uh, the parts that were given to us, bits and pieces from all over Southern Australia.